I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so, um, we are starting a new month now. So, some things are setting up. Uh, I wanted to let me close this. I wanted to look at some of the big dogs on the month and kind of see what they have done. Um, what I really want to start with is VIX because I have been kind of pointing y'all attention to it because it did the 212 on the month and it's hit magnitude and it's sitting at a somewhat strong support. It does still have room. Um, it can, oh, picked the wrong thing. It can come down a little bit further to 1875. It's like almost there. Um, and then we have this support here, 1657. Now, so this is a chop area that has sat around for a while. Um, but we just want to kind of keep our eyes on that because knowing that it's also at the support area and also knowing that the market has kind of been on a tear, this could possibly reverse and um, we could see some correction. So just kind of keeping that in mind. Um, the Dow is looking strong, but with the exception of the Russell, the Dow and the NASDAQ both have taken out the previous month's high and then retrace. So um, we kind of want to see what it does if it you know continues to retrace or if they have enough strength to push it back um, above last month's high. So um, looking at it on the two week, <coughs> excuse me y'all, <clears throat> y'all know we like to incorporate the two week at least every two weeks, not necessarily every week just because the two week can give you a little bit faster move um, versus the monthly. And understanding that we start a new two week on Monday, a new two week bar. So if we have any two week setups, then you wanna start looking at them now. Um, so the only one I see is that the Russell does have an inside here. Otherwise everything else is like a two two continuation. And looking at it on the weekly, Russell did an outside week, so can they continue? Bulls were uh, pretty strong here, so if they continue, then that may actually move, move. Same with the NASDAQ. Breaking above last week's high gives us a pretty strong move with as far as this range. <clears throat> We are at a week weekly resistance though. I have something in my chest, y'all. Sorry about that. But uh, looking at VIX again, you see what I mean about it being at a support. And the last few times that it's been here, it's bounced from here. So it may have taken a while because we're on a weekly, but it has bounced from here. Also keeping in mind that breaking this 1875 here would make a new low on the week because you see it's been higher lows here so it's kind of sitting here it keeps going it's going to make a new uh it's going to break that trend of higher lows on the week and so on the day <clears throat> i just want to point out where it is in regards to the 200 so you can see the vix is under so that's generally bearish um but out of these four, we got the Russell that finished above. The Dow is way above. We've been watching it. It's just still above. And the NASDAQ is still below. So, interesting to see what happens next week. So, let's look at our regular stuff. So, we'll start with Apple. Um... Apple I like actually on the weekly and I'll show you that in a second but so far we are inside month um, Microsoft has done a 3-2 so you know in terms of strat language what happens here is that we took out these lows and if you listen to the pre-market movers show I was telling y'all about this 
And then we did, we, we, we came back in. And I told you we were targeting 250. It hit 250 and it did this outside bar. And that's how I got that target was because of that outside bar. And then once the three ended with this really strong hammer, when it, took, it continues up, that two continuation, it lets you know that bulls are still in the building. And so your next target would be here. Now granted, we do have this resistance here, but on the monthly, if it continues, the next target for Microsoft is 267. So um, SPY took out last, <clears throat> last month's high and already retraced. So that's in the word space and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but if it can continue, this was the target for last month when it did this 2-2 two -two reversal. 411, 412 is the target. That's the next target for it to, to hit on the month. Um, just have to see what this does. If it retraces enough to 50% or not, but also note that it's broken above on the monthly, it's broken above this 8 and this 20. And the Q's just looks exactly like SPY, except the difference is that it's under the EMAs versus SPY being above. Um, Apple, interesting enough, is in between, so that's kind of a conflict right there. And then Microsoft is below. So on the two week, Apple is giving double in size, so that's not even a strat signal. Microsoft, unless this reverses, is not also not a strat signal. So none of these are strat signals on, on the two week, but just kind of see where they are. On the weekly though, Apple has a nice rev strat set up here. So the rev strat is this one, two, then you're looking for this two up reversal. So if it um, completes and it breaks above 149.46, y'all know that this is the, the outside year target, which at this point since we're, I mean not target, but trigger. At this point since we are in December, it's not going to do the outside year, even if it stays under there. It's just, I think it's too much. To, we would have to fall the entire month for it to complete that outside because it's, it's at 116. So I doubt that it's going to get there. But it's been a strong resistance level and uh, support. It's kind of flipped back and forth. So if it can break above this 149.46, the target for this is not the one, but it's actually this candle, 153.70. So that would be the target. And then if it did that, it may push in 212 on the mall, 212 up. So we're going to watch Apple for this month to see if it's got enough strength to continue that. Um, you know, if it does that, it's going to send the market. And I already told you about with Microsoft, if it does that. So if Apple can push and Microsoft continues pushing, then that's going to push SPY and the Qs. So um, no actionable signal on SPY on the week, but with Microsoft, there is a 3-2 continuation, which is the same as the month. This 3-2 continuation would coincide with that monthly push and then the same here with the cues the 3-2 continuation so if you you know if apple does this rev strat microsoft 3-2 cues is also a play 3-2 and so you, we would look for it to break above this 295 it's 296 no it's 295 82 ish <laughs> and the target is 311 311.06, right? Because this is not, yeah. So that would be our next target on the week. <clears throat> so, of course, pointing out on the day where it is in relation to the 200, um, Apple's still struggling a little bit below, but that move would push it up there, just keeping in mind that this would be the first strong resistance for Apple and Microsoft. Um, SPY is sitting right there. So, SPY was really interesting. I'm actually, since we're done with them, I'm going to go to SPY on a bigger screen. Because SPY was interesting um, the way that it's been fighting. And there was a couple of things that I wanted to point out that I've been talking about with SPY. So first, first things first, I wanted to talk about the inverse head and shoulders that we've been talking about since about right here. 
So it was a small one, right? And then I, t I mentioned, I believe last week, that we had a bigger one on a bigger time frame. <clears throat> this, all of this chop here was making a shoulder for a big head. There's a shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder, and it played out. We had this resistance here, but you know, the, the bulls are still in control. And that's basically what it's telling you is that on a larger, on this daily time frame, the bulls are still in control. Even if you look at it on the weekly, you, I would look at this as there's a shoulder there, a head, and then we can make a shoulder. Can do that for weeks actually, but I like it better on the, the daily time frame. But the other thing that I wanted to show you was the last time we kind of sort of made this pattern was back here. And I mentioned that before, and then we moved to the 200 SMA and immediately rejected. The difference this time, um, I guess Powell <laughs> is the difference this time. It actually made it above the 200. See here, it like it, it didn't have strength. It immediately rejected. It did not see above that. It, it, it was not even a peak above it. The last time it's been above it was back here in April. Um, and that's basically the last time it saw it. You know, here is when it broke below, kind of faked out a little bit, came back again. And then that was the last time it saw it. And then it was a solid resistance. So here it broke above, continued, broke below. But what I really want to point out is that we closed above. Okay, so it's kind of important to kind of see who's in control. Time frame continuity is a little in conflict now because we have a new month um, that just started. So we haven't uncoupled yet. But, you know, keeping in mind where it is, it's above the eight on the month, on the week. This eight just barely, but just barely crossed this 20, which is a bullish sign. And on the day, the eight has crossed this 200 EMA and it's held. Okay, so I always tell y'all what to look for when something is bullish. It needs to break above these EMAs, the 200 SMA and the um, EMA, and it needs to hold. This isn't enough strength to say it, it held, it's holding so far, but um, you know, the EMAs have also crossed and notice the difference here than when it was here. The EMAs did not cross the two, uh, well, it wasn't as close, but it crossed above it quickly and then came right, right back down. So keeping that in mind as well, <laughs> but if it crosses above this 200 SMA, that's an even stronger signal because it definitely hasn't done that. And it, it didn't have enough strength to do that before. So, and then we also have that Santa Claus rally and things like that coming up. So we can get some strength. If it can hold above here. First of all, we have a bullish Randy Jackson here. Um, take a little second to teach about that I've talked about that before but basically what that is is a two up a two up a two down that's corrective basically a TTO and then you're looking for a two up back into co continuation of the trend so it's a, a nice reversal that you can use it would be like taking this correction right here two down two up so this was the next correction because after it gapped down with non-farm payrolls, payroll numbers, it, I mean, they immediately brought it up. So you can tell we're still in buy the dip mode. You can see it's still been respecting the eight and the, mostly the, yeah, the 20. So, you know, it bounced right there. So yeah, um, the break above 408 target would be 410. 411, which is, or 412, which is that monthly target. And then we have a little bit of a range there and a gap at 422 to fill. If we decide to move, um, but yeah, everything is, it's, it's looking bullish to me. 
honestly. I'm not, the way things are lining up, this spy looks super bullish. I'm always ready either way, um, but keeping in mind the patterns that I've shown y'all on here. One other thing I do want to point out is once you start seeing them, you can't unsee them. Just in case it has run out of steam, this is a shoulder and that's a head. That head could do something. Not quite sure. It could come up a little bit more. It could move a little sideways. But you will know that it's a head if it tops out basically right there. And then it moves sideways for a few days over here. And then it drops. Which, I mean, y'all look at the time and how it does that. If for some reason it did do that and we didn't have a bullish run. And say we moved a little sideways and created a shoulder. And even popped a little bit up here for the Santa rally. Hopefully y'all looking at the bottom of the time. And then came down at the start of the year. Because that's kind of what we did last year. So that's my thoughts. It's how a, a head and shoulders could possibly form on that. So, all right, moving on, let us go to IWM small caps just because we have been watching them. On the month, it's kind of in an interesting place. Uh, I've got a hammer here. So, if that goes in force and it can break above this 190, it has some magnitude there. Um, let's see, on the two week. Got an inside two week. So it's a nice actionable signal. If it can really break this range, this range here, um, and we, you know, showing some strength. I don't like IWM. So yeah, um, it's eight crossed above this 200 here on the week, and it looks kind of like spy as far as where it is on the day. And the difference with IWM is it has popped above the 200 a couple times, but it's never, it has, I mean, it's not, see, never. It hasn't been able to hold in a long time since the first time it dropped below in November. The last time, let me say, not the first time, but in November of 21. So, yeah. XLE. I like on the month because I have been watching to see if it's tired yet. You know, um, it, it still has some magnitude left if it wants to, if they, they're going to keep buying it. But we know that it's been on a tear and we know it does oops, need some corrective activity. So what I am looking for for XLE is to see if it's going to trigger this monthly down and even if they don't take it to magnitude here, um, because it's been a while since it's gone for the 20, you know, even to this eight, just to see, to catch it um, on the two week. It's not an actionable signal, but it is an inside week. So almost all of your XLE names are inside week. So, um, Oxy. CVX. Oops, I can't. I can't type today, y'all. X. Um. M O. Computers acting up. Oh, that's not it. Um, I'm thinking PCX. No, I'm, I'm missing all the XLE numbers. I usually do ZOM, Oxy, CVX. <laughs> Those are where I, I, I focus on. But <clears throat> you have inside uh, inside shooter here on the week. Um, so if that if it's ready to go, then it may finally trigger that monthly to the downside. And also on the day, all of them kind of look like this. So take your pick with oil um, and see if it's about ready. Because what I see here is a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. And it's just looking like it's not, it doesn't have the strength it did here. You know, so it may be topping out and it may be ready to come down. 
the eight may be trying to cross the 20 here we got a shooter on the day so keep your eyes on energy as usual um snow so snow had decent earnings it's had its rundown so now i'm watching to see if it's going to uh correct some <clears throat> it has a nice two week actionable signal it's not a hammer but um it ended pretty strong and if it can break above and hold you know it can get up it can run like twenty dollars next couple of weeks you know atr on snow is ten dollars so um on the week it would be a three two up continuous continuation to show that the bulls are still in control so and it's an inside day almost filled this gap to this downside but not quite but their earnings basically saved it because I, I mean i think it was headed there and then earning <clears throat> earnings saved it and yeah so it's a doji on a day kind of indecision but we ended above the eight which is bullish so um have to see this can break 155 they can go 162 168 170 so that would need some time snow is a little expensive but um giving it time helps so uh, we've also been talking about SOXL. So looking at that on the month. Um, we've been talking about it since here when it was, it finally, I mean, not finally, we made this like super low, low and reversed. Um, so we were watching to see if it held and it's kind of in conflict right now, um, but looking to see if it can, you know, finally make some moves. It's, it's if the chips will recover basically on FXOXL will actually move. Um, on the two week, we do have an inside bar though. So it's rejecting this eight you see on the two week. So I'm not quite sure that it will push above it. It needs some strong bullish activity here and volume to break there. But if it does, it would be a three two. On the, uh, on the week. It is inside these EMAs though. So it's kind of in a tight area. This is what folks I guess would call a cup and handle. If it breaks above. It would be a cup and handle in force. Because it. Um, yeah. It's a cup and a handle. So you are looking for it to break above. So of course XOXL. That would be you know. Um, AMD. NVIDIA. Actually, AMD, I think, had a shooter on the week. It did. It's green, but shooter. And at a really tough resistance on the week. So AMD could rev strat. So if it broke 72.75, then the target would be 70. So yeah, AMD could rev strat if this cup and handle doesn't play out. Um, so yeah. That's SOXL. McDonald's, we have been watching. I'm not quite sure if it's ready to fall yet either. But keeping in mind this, um, it's an indecision candle for the last month. But we would look for it to break to seal. Oh, autumn sixes. 266.66 to break to the downside for some corrective activity. Um, it's an inside two week bar. So that may be a good trigger with some time that it, that'll work. And then it would be on the week a three, two down. Um, if it's finally ready. It's kind of sitting up here though. Still finding support on this eight and this 20. So just have to kind of see if it's ready to fall. Yeah, it is a small gap here to the downside though. 260, 91. Yeah, it's a two, almost $2. Yeah, almost two dollar gap there so but we are still above the um both of the 200 moving averages so that is bullish the eights being above now how i pointed that out to you with spy earlier you can kind of see what happens when they do cross above the 200 
it generally stays bullish. So that's why I was pointing that out to you. Same with when it crosses below, it generally becomes bearish. So BA has been doing absolutely wonderful. Um, congrats if anybody has caught that uh, that 212 up last month and it took out a couple of targets and it, it's still going you know it, BA hasn't done this in a while in fact August 2019 was the last time that it had two green months in a row that's like that's actually crazy I mean you can count sort of kind of count this but not really because it's indecision. The only thing with these two candles is that the bulls ended stronger. But other than that, it hasn't had two consecutive green months since then. So, and also on the month, we have broken above the eight and actually all the EMAs, which is bullish. So BA may be trying to have some recovery. Wait a minute, that's really weird. Oh no, it's not. On the day though, same thing. We have crossed above the 200 and the eight, both the eight and the 20 have crossed above. So uh, yeah, BA may be actually finally recovering. TTD I wanted to point out because it's been beat down for a little bit and it may even though this is a red hammer it's still a hammer so in force above this, this thing does not want to get right on it around 5644 um, we could see the two up reversal on the month and our target would be 6477 Um, on the two week, even though this is a two up, it's barely. Um, so I still like it for the like as almost as if it was an inside week. I normally don't do two two continuations, but because this break here would break and actually break the monthly, then I would look at it then. So that would be a three two on the day. And keep in mind the resistance that we have here at the 200 and we do have a gap to fill at 61.18 it wants to continue to go and then China has been doing a thing so I wanted to point out that Baidu um, did a 212 up on the mall China is a little risky it's a little volatile um, but if it does continue then that that will be our target 126.06 Again, it's been beat down long enough that, you know, it, it may be, especially if we have a bullish month, this might be a, a good play. That was the best one to me out of all of the China ones because it had the actionable signal in the month. So, um, like for instance, Baba has been doing well, but there's not an actionable signal here. But keeping in mind, if it can break this resistance here, next target is 95. Yeah, 95. Um, it was something, I think. Yes, outside quarter. Now, if they continue buying this 125, no, it's not going to make it there by the end of the month. So never mind on that one. And then JD looks just like Baba. So 61.90 and 63.55 are the next targets for that. So that's really all I had. Um, let me check the chat real quick. 